In this lesson, we're going to take a more expanded look at the 2D Texture Editor and 3D Coats Paint Workspace. Apart from the Fill Tool, you're probably going to find this to be the single most important feature set in the entire workspace because it brings a great deal of the same capability you have in Photoshop directly into 3D Coats Viewport. You can have your 2D Texture Editor split the viewport and this will allow you to make edits in a 3D viewport and see changes made simultaneously in the 2D editor or vice versa. I typically like to dock this editor inside this right column because that puts me a little closer to the panels that I frequently use. However, if you prefer, you can undock it and place it all the way to the left, scale it up, and now you have a split viewport with all your tools right in the middle. You could also undock it. I'll scale this panel in. And with it floating like this, you have the advantage of closing it at any point in time and quickly bringing it back up by going to the textures menu, texture UV editor, or you could assign a hotkey to it by hovering over this option and hitting the end key on your keyboard then making that keyboard assignment I chose the letter T and so now I can bring that back up and 3D Coat remembers exactly how you had it when you last closed this panel okay so in the upper left hand corner of this panel if you click on the little question mark icon you'll see a tooltip giving you a brief explanation of this panel and if at any point in time, if you're zoomed way in or something, you can quickly reset the spacing. And if I zoom out, you'll see this yellow boundary around the default 01 texture space. Everything else outside of that is just a copy of this. If you have multiple UV maps, then 3D Coat will display them here in this drop list in the upper right hand portion. This one happens to have only one. But it, again, if you had multiple UV sets or UV maps, you could choose between them. And then once you have it displayed, you can select between the different maps that are available. You have color, normals or displacement, glossiness, and then metalness. If I right click inside an open area inside this UV space, I can zoom in and out. Now you can drag up and down or left or right, it doesn't matter. And middle mouse click will pan just like it is here in the 3D viewport. Okay, middle mouse click and drag. If I right click here in the viewport and drag left and right or up and down, I can zoom as well. So the same functionality you have here in the viewport, you have right here in the 2D editor. Except whenever you use a material and the reason for that is when you bring up a material you can right click and quickly drag it into place if you want and now if I right click and drag inside an empty area it no longer works however if you hold the alt key and then right click and drag now you can zoom as you did before Okay, now I noticed in 3D Coat 4.1 before PBR was introduced, when you held down the Alt key and zoomed in, 3D Coat would zoom both the image and your 2D editor at the same time. And that was very convenient when you want to simply zoom in to get a closer look, but you don't want to have to relocate and rezoom, rescale this image, especially after you've placed it exactly how you want it. This is something that's been brought to Andrew's attention, so you should see it corrected by the time you see this video. So I just wanted to mention that again, when you hold the Alt key and right click and drag in an open area, it should zoom both the image and the UV space. Now, if you hover over a UV island, right click and drag, 3D Coat will scale your brush. So that's important to remember. You need to be over an open area to zoom. Another means of navigating inside this 2D editor is using hotkeys only. There are times where you may be inside a UV space and it's 
a bit of a hassle to have to move or pan to an open area of your UV space just to zoom in and out. 3D Coat has the very same hotkey combination for zooming in and out of your image. So that is holding the control key and then tapping your plus key while holding down the control key. So again, control plus to zoom in, control minus hotkey to zoom out. And if you want to pan with your arrow keys, you can do that as well. Right arrow key will move to the right. Left arrow key will move to the left. Up. Arrow key will move up. Down arrow key down. So pretty intuitive. All right. That's probably most helpful when you want to dock it inside your column here. Maybe just expand your column somewhat. And again, control plus to zoom in in a particular area. Control minus. And there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and undock that from that right column and bring it all the way back over to the left side of the interface. That way I have a nice split viewport. Let's scale this column down. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the more impressive elements to this is the live interactivity between the two. Whatever you paint in one mode, you'll see it instantly reflected in the other. Let me create a new layer. I can create a new one just like I would in Photoshop with a hotkey combination. That's Control shift n or this creates new layer icon. And so when I paint in a 3D viewport, You'll not see anything while I'm actually pressing down and brushing in the 2D editor, but once you let up, it instantly updates. So let me pan. However, if you are painting inside the 2D editor, the updates you see are real time meaning they are updating while you're brushing you don't have to wait till you let up from your brush or your cursor in order to see the update one quick and dirty trick that's not necessarily related to the 2d editor but can be helpful for many users especially a new user is to save time from having to use the eraser brush or maybe hold the control key to erase, you can simply delete the pixel information that you have on a given layer by hitting the delete key. Whatever you enabled here in your three channels, when you hit the delete key, 3D Coat will clear that pixel information from the currently selected layer. So undo. If I want to delete just the specularity information, then what I want to do is enable just specularity. When I hit delete, that's all it's going to delete is just the specularity information. So I'll undo and I'll switch it up this time. And I'll make color active and that's it. And so now I'll hit delete. Specularity information is intact, just the color was deleted. And then I'll enable both, hit the delete key we're back to square one. Just thought that was a tip worth mentioning. And another unique aspect to this 2D editor that I like personally is the ability to quickly fill in parts of your model with color using the individual UV islands by simply using the fill tool and just tapping that UV island. I'll do it for the other side. Very nice. And uh, let's finish up by pointing out that practically all the tools that you can use in the 3D viewport are also applicable here in the 2D editor as well. So yeah, this is a really powerful feature and you definitely want to make the most of it. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.